Okay, and hey everybody, welcome to Chew Stream. Hope you guys are having an awesome day, an awesome Thursday. Uh, you know, it is, for anybody here in Toronto, you know what I'm talking about. It is absolutely freezing over here. Just non-stop snow yesterday and man, this morning was just so darn cold. Apparently it's supposed to get a lot warmer tomorrow. So you know what that means. When you're trying super hard and just bad things happen sometimes, you know what that means. That means that great things are on their way. And even if that, that isn't true, you know, what makes it true is when you believe it. When you believe that, you know, when you're trying hard, okay, that's number one, you have to be trying hard, and bad things happen, that's number two, if you are positive, you, you stay positive, it's the third criteria, then the result is that amazing things will happen, great things will happen. And it doesn't matter, you know, if that is absolutely true or not, it's the belief that it's true that makes it happen. Right? Totally. So, um, I saw that uh, Kelsey Bass got her uh, drawing from me a couple weeks ago, or that I did a couple weeks ago. She just got it. So congratulations to Kelly Bass. And I'm going to be doing a new drawing for you guys today, okay, right here. And uh, all you have to do to have a chance to win this is, you know, you just tweet about it, just share it, or not tweet about it, but share it, you know, on uh, your Facebook. And, you know, if you answer any questions or ask me any questions in the, uh, on the Chew Stream fan page, you know, that would be great because it's kind of hard to read all of the messages on the, um, in the chat, okay? So do me that favor and just put everything in the Chew Stream fan page uh, on the very first post there. That would be fantastic, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to, you know, do a little roll call. I see that Austria is up in here. There's, you know, a bunch of ex, uh, I hate using the word ex, but former uh, in-house workshop students here. Love you guys, miss you guys. Um, for those of you that don't know, I want to just tell you a couple of special dates coming up. Okay, March 14th, which is tomorrow, is the deadline for applying to the, in in to the Imaginism 30-day in-house workshop in Montreal. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for people that are very serious about being artists and really just um, you know interested in improving themselves and learning and all this stuff what it is is that you would be living with one of our you know uh, senior artists Thierry Lafontaine he's gonna be you're gonna be actually living at his place with him with three other workshop students four in total that's it for the experience of a lifetime, you know, 30 days where you don't have to worry about anything except for just nonstop learning, 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 art, art, art. It's awesome. Okay, so um, yeah, a little roll call. I see that Romania is up in here, Brazil, Malaysia, Oklahoma, Philippines, Ch China, U.S. Virgin Islands, Netherlands. Portugal, Florida, holy smokes, Germany, Russia, Romania, New Hampshire, it's tons, tons, wow, it's awesome, okay, I'm just trying to get to the top of my little chat thing here, so many, France, great, okay, well, um, yeah, the next thing that I just want to tell you guys about before we get started here is uh, March 29th and 30th, Toronto Schoolism Live Workshop. 
with Paula Zane, Marcelo Vignali, and Nathan Fouts. Very exciting. This is going to be the first time that I'm going to attend a uh, Paula Zane workshop and a Marcelo Vignali workshop. I've attended Nathan Fouts' workshop before for designing uh, through light and color, which is phenomenal. And he's actually in uh, Florence right now doing that workshop but, but in Toronto he's going to be doing environment design which is really exciting and big shouts out to Nemo Academy in Florence which is hosting the Schoolism Live workshop today awesome 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 guys out there they're like uh, my Italian family out there wonderful wonderful people um, and both of these workshops Florence and uh, Toronto are sponsored by some wonderful friends at Sketchbook Pro and the reason why I really want to you know tell you guys about Sketchbook Pro is not just because they're sponsoring us but be long before that they've supported me and many other artists through their journeys um, even when nobody really knew us you know that's how I kinda got known in the very beginning that was my jump start was actually sketchbook pro um, posting my stuff so I've always had a soft spot for them so you know it's an inexpensive program definitely try it out okay so anyways uh, you know don't want to make this a giant commercial or nothing but you know those guys are like family as well so definitely to give them a shout out they've been just supporting everything that I've been doing lately so you know it's been really really awesome um, so I wanted to go to the very first oops let me just my internet's a little slow here okay so I wanted to go to just the very first uh, question if you go to the link here you can type your questions here and I'll answer as many as I can um, and the first question is any tips for working on a daily routine I love my routine I think that you know in the very beginning it's funny because in the very very beginning uh, both K and I were like you know we want to be independent because we don't want a routine we don't you know we want to have freedom you know all this stuff which is a bit I think immature thinking looking back at it because the way that you can have more freedom is by getting more of your stuff done a lot quicker right when you get your stuff done a lot quicker then you have more time to do all sorts of other things and a routine has helped me tremendously to do that so what's my routine uh, or any tips for working on a daily routine Yes, you know, it's kind of like talking about developing habits. So how do you develop a great routine? How do you develop great habits? Um, I try not to push myself too much to develop a great habit. I want it to ease in. I want it to grow on me like fungus on, uh, you know, a, a fruit that's gone, <laughs> gone rotten. <laughs> Not that I've gone rotten or anything, but just gradual. Gradual is what I'm talking about. So, um, you know, I used to wake up really late. I used to wake up at around 11 o'clock because I would go to sleep around 5 o'clock in the morning, right? And that didn't really work out for me. I wanted to start waking up early because if you wake up early, you still have the choice of sleeping late. But if you sleep late, you don't have the choice of going back in time and waking up earlier so you don't have to stay up so late. Right? So I want to wake up earlier. My routine was waking up more like closer to 11 o'clock at a point. So I just started to say, okay, well, this week I will wake up at 10.50. Next week I will start waking up at you know 10 40 and so on and so forth very very gradual super super gradual so that I didn't really feel it so now I wake up around 4 30 5 o'clock in the morning it's awesome nobody's up at all you know and I get so much done 
during that time from then till 9 a.m. I got so much done you wouldn't even believe it uh, which means that from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. if that's when I end my day it's almost like all that time I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm just thinking about oh what should I do next because I'm pretty much done every super emergency thing that I need to do so that's a tip I would you know that's a cr when I first heard it waking up at dawn that kind of thing or even before dawn if you're in Toronto uh, I heard that and I was like wow that's crazy I wouldn't do that but if you adopt what I'm saying just wake up a tiny bit earlier every week not even every day but just every week and just gradually do it you'll find that you too will be waking up you know 5 a.m. in the morning with very little effort you know most of the time it's funny I don't even use an alarm clock anymore because I know that I'll be getting up at that time I'll be used to it um, yeah so any tips for working on a daily routine gradually do it all very gradually okay another let's see here let's see another question here um, Is this, your, is this stream your way of warming up or are you drawing for a while before the cast? It depends, you know, I, I try to draw as much as I can without drawing, you know, too much where I physically hurt my arm, uh, which, you know, kind of happened in the past. Today, I think I did just a tiny bit you know five minutes or so it was really more now all the super important things today are all about um, getting back to emails planning the next thing which is the schoolism live workshop in Toronto uh, planning you know we're planning a social event as well a little meet and greet for everybody so that you know I can meet you guys and you guys can meet all of us and all that good stuff um, that takes quite a bit of planning so that's what I've been doing uh, usually though I like to sketch right in the morning you know that's where the first five minutes came in this morning I just I would usually just get up and just doodle something just try to draw something in the first five minutes Hopefully, you know, something, maybe it's something that you've been thinking about for quite a while, or perhaps it's something that uh, is from one of your dreams. That'd be kind of cool, too. So as I start drawing this thing out, yeah, I'm not really thinking about what I'm drawing until I start drawing a bit of it. So apparently this is going to be what I'm thinking right now. It's it's going to be a I don't even know what to call it. A bunny butterfly, a butter bunny, a bunny fly. I don't know, but that's what I'm drawing right now. Okay. So again, if you have any questions, just type them in into the. Uh, link there that you see online and I'll be happy to answer as many as I can uh, okay so Vico says I've seen a couple of artists that trace photos or paint over them to make portraits I've always had the, the feeling that this is like cheating what's your opinion on this my opinion is that you know everybody has a different kind of definition of what art is, what is considered. Um, you know, some people, they feel that digital painting isn't art. You ever get that? Some people feel that, you know, digital painting isn't nearly as artistic as, like, real paint. 
I think that's all kind of funny. You know, it's photography art. I think the main thing that people don't like is when they feel kind of tricked. So I would say if you want to trace over your portraits, then I guess, you know, go ahead, do it. I, I'm not too into it, but if it makes you happy, then hey, why not, right? So yeah, I was gonna make this into some sort of a bunny butterfly. So if you've been, you know, if you want this bunny butterfly drawing, all you have to do is share the post on Facebook and I'm going to just choose somebody randomly at the end of the stream and uh, you're going to get a butter bunny in the mail. Okay. I think I got a new question here. Two questions from my friend Tammy in Australia. What's up, Tammy? Tammy just uh, you know did the Imaginism workshop. Just left us, so we all miss you very, very much. Um, what's an animation, movie, or short that changed your life or the way that you looked at things? Why or what are the lessons, morals it taught you? Well, um, let's just start off with, because a movie, an animation movie, an animated movie that really affected me. I would definitely say, um, man, I remember watching Incredibles and uh, Ratatouille. And after that, after both those movies, I felt depression. I don't know if any of you felt the same things. Definitely, you know, speak up in the chat if you did. But I felt depressed after watching those movies. Why? Because they're so good. You know, I just looked at them and just thought to myself, what's the point? What, what am I doing here? Why am I trying when obviously the best that you can get has already been done? What is the point? I remember thinking that. And it's funny because I felt that way when I got into uh, animation the, in the college that I wanted to get into. As a student, walking through the halls, looking at all the art up there, and just going, oh, what's the point? Why am I going to even try when all these people are already so good already? You know what I'm saying? You, you guys ever feel that way? I'm sure a bunch of you have, because I think it's a common thing. Artists, we have to deal with bad drawings for so long before they become really cool. And even when we concentrate super hard and we're really, really trying, you know, we still have to go through so many drawings, so many bad paintings before they become great. So. That's the normal path for us all to just feel kind of like, you know, it's, what's the point? That's, you know, what I keep repeating to people is that's the hardest thing about art. Is art hard to do? Is it hard to become an artist? Yes, it is. It's very hard. But why is it hard? It's because of things like this. It's because we have to go through bad drawings before they become really good. And a lot of times, even though we're trying hard, they don't become good until perhaps even years later. But the good thing is, the thing that we all must remember is that it's all possible. It's just a matter of choice. It's a matter of your choice to say, do you want to you know, keep improving? Do you want to keep drawing? Do you want to go out and uh, 
hang out with your friends or do you want to go out with your sketchbook and hang out with your friends and draw them or whatever, you know? Um, it's all a simple choice. And don't forget about this one. Well, do you want to keep drawing the same stuff that you're super familiar with and that you're actually pretty darn good at? Or do you want to expand your horizons a bit and go after the things that really challenge you? Right? Go after the things that really challenge you and, and you have to deal with bad drawings again for a while before they become awesome again. One of my challenges has always been um, drawing women. You know, I don't really draw women too much. I like, you know, I can draw women, but I'd say creatures definitely my stronger suit. Women would be less strong because I just don't do it as much. So, you know, over the last, this year, I've been just constantly drawing little, you know, crappy sketches of, of women. Because um, I know over practice, they're going to become really good. And then I'll start posting them. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Uh, what will enable your cover letter or resume application to stand out? What do you, as, per, as a professional, look for or deem as potential in budding artists? Love that question, Tammy. Good job on some awesome questions. Let me take a sip of my coffee and I'm going to talk about this. Okay, so what can you do on your cover? First of all, definitely have a cover letter. I actually, I remember going through, you know, tons of resumes whenever we're doing a internship or things like that. and. I don't even look at the resume unless it has a cover letter. Why? Because anybody can just send you a resume and then send the next person the same resume easily. I don't want people that can just easily just apply or easily get in for an internship because I'm going to be spending a lot of time with them, teaching them and all sorts of things like that. So I want to see effort from their part as well. It has to have a cover letter for me. It has to. If it doesn't, I won't even look at it. The cover letter itself should be something that talks from the heart, for me anyways, um, about why you like that particular company or that particular person. You know, speak about things that are very much personalized towards that company or that, that person. Could, a lot of times, uh, one to really uh, differentiate you from the crowd is talking about some of the older things, some of the earlier things, you know, that nobody really knows about. If you know some of those things, I would talk about that as well, so that it will give us much better sense of how hardcore of a fan you are. We talked about this a little bit last week. Um, the other one, which is tough, but probably one of the biggest secrets, is that when you apply for anything, when you apply for anything, think to yourself, I am willing to take 10 horrible no's before I get a yes. Okay, I'm willing to take 10 horrible rejections before I get them to say yes. And if you're willing to do that, like, I don't like your art, I don't think you're a good artist, I don't think it's the right time for you, whatever, and you're willing to take 10 of those, then you're going to get into pretty much everything that you want to get into unless you're doing it without effort or without common sense. You need both, right? You can't just hand in the same portfolio 10 times. That's no effort and no common sense. You have to hand in 10 different portfolios, rethinking everything every time, approaching them in a different way every time, and showing how clever you are. 
you know, and how, how much tenacity you have. That's what's really going to get you through that door. That's what's really going to, especially, you know, some of you that are from far away. Imagine this. Imagine people are emailing you saying, can I stay at your house? Can I stay at your house and eat your food and, you know, read your stuff? And it's, it feels that personal when you are in a position like me and you, you have a studio. It's not a huge studio. You know, I am going to see you every single day. That's how kind of scary it is. And when somebody's emailing from like, you know, a completely different country, it becomes that much harder to be able to feel you know, comfortable bring a person like that over, right? Especially when they have to move to you know, do the co-op with you or the internship with you. You don't want to bring anybody over that's not going to enjoy themselves, right? So gotta make sure that you do that extra bit of effort great questions okay James asks another awesome question What's up, James? Um, James, by the way, everybody, you know, definitely check out some of these people, all these people that are commenting and stuff, definitely check out their Facebook pages because it's generally the ones that are willing to put themselves out there to ask questions and all this stuff, hunger, hunger for learning. Those are the ones that generally become a really awesome artist. Um, so James asked a really good question, which was, uh, what would you do if you realized that your current job, even though is art related, is stopping you from reaching your future goals? What I do, I would start weighing out how much I need this job. If I'm going to be okay, if I'm not going to starve, if I'm not going to lose my house, then I wouldn't take the job. I would never take a bad art job. That's kind of like an ultimate principle that I have where if I'm not into the job, even if they are willing to pay me, you know, a million dollars, I, I almost choke saying that. I have to say to myself, I'm not going to take this job. Those are principles that I live by that have gotten me the jobs that I really, really want. Because when you stop taking those jobs, all of a sudden you're available to take the jobs that you really want. And if you don't have the jobs that you really want and you don't take that job that you didn't want, well, you have plenty of time to do your own stuff to do your own stuff that resembles the kinds of jobs that you really do want and then it'll attract those kind of jobs. That's how it worked. That's how it worked for me. That's how it'll work for you because when people see that you're just painting this stuff just for the sheer, sheer joy of it, that shows passion. And when you are doing stuff you know, you're painting things and you're taking it seriously, well, you're also showing your chops, you're showing your skills, right? And if you do not have that dream job that you want, just start doing it. Just make it up yourself and just start doing it. Because if you do, it'll attract those kind of jobs. People will see your stuff and go, yeah, that makes sense. I would totally see how that person would make sense in my studio. Okay, so just in case you came in a little late, 
this little uh, butter bunny, butterfly bunny, will be going out there. It's going to be flying out there to somebody out there in the world. No matter where you are, no matter where you're from, I'm going to send this out to you guys, to one of you. Right, and all you have to do is just encourage people to draw with me. You know, and, and for those of you that aren't doing, you know, work right now and just listening, pick up a piece of paper, pick up a pencil. It doesn't matter if you don't know what to draw, just start drawing a shape out. Start exercising those muscles, those artistic muscles there, and just start to create. Start off with things that you're very familiar with drawing if you're having a hard time. Just like when I do brainless drawings, when I'm not really thinking too much, I tend to draw creatures more. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see if there's any more questions here. Okay, I see Toby wrote a question, which was, uh, do you start with personality and names to all your characters, or do some of them uh, come to life just as shapes and scribbles? I think it's a little bit of both. It depends. Um, in this case, I did have an idea after I kind of saw that it was a, you know, I kind of saw, oh yeah, this could be a bunny. And I started to think, well, it's hopping. It's, it could be kind of fluttering almost. Um, and then I thought of, you know, wouldn't it be funny if it was Butterfly Bunny? You know, right now um, I'm creating this creature design class all about my, all about the creative process that I go through to come up with great ideas and good designs and things that, you know, how to make things memorable and all this stuff. And this is actually one of the lessons, you know, how to come up with good ideas. It's never, it's very rarely, I will very rarely have a great idea from the start. It's usually a kind of good idea that isn't quite there yet, that needs a little bit of work, needs a little bit of thinking imagination and so on and so forth and then it becomes good later on um, I kind of think of it as first the most important thing from your painting is what is the overall feeling that you want to convey here what do you want people to feel when they look at your painting or drawing and then I kind of measure it, you know, if it's supposed to be funny, if it's supposed to be cute. Okay, if it's supposed to be funny, am I actually just looking at it going, kind of giving it a snort, just going, hmm, kind of like that? Or am I looking at it going, oh my gosh, that is hilarious, and I need to share that, blah, 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 blah. Is it going for awe-inspiring, and right now you have it as, Huh, <laughs> you know, to a complete stranger, most of the time, because we see so much stuff on the internet, a lot of times it's just, uh, you just feel like, huh, kind of interesting, kind of sort of, but not enough to push you over the edge to, you know, make it viral, make it spread, really, really connect with your audience on that heavy, heavy level. When you do, that's when people start to share it, right? Um, so try to measure your ideas like that, thinking about it from a third person point of view, and am I feeling that feeling that I want the audience to feel? And if so, how much am I feeling it? Am I feeling it a tremendous amount or just kind of sorta? That's very important. Um, when showcasing, when showcasing traditional or digital art in a portfolio, what are things that can help an artist present their work in the best quality possible? Scanners tend to wash out 
uh, lightly shaded graphite pencil. Photographing work can also present challenges. Now that is a, you know, it sounds like your scanner is not that good because um, scanners now, they could pick up a lot of stuff. I know my scanner can pick up a lot of little intricate things. Uh, so, you know, it's like you're going to do one of two things. You're going to get a better scanner or you're going to learn about pushing your tones a lot more so that they're more obvious in your in your art which you know that would kind of stink because your your art now is dictated by the the quality of technology that you have um hopefully you could get a better scanner but the portfolio how to present the portfolio in the best way possible number one how different is it you know just like what we're talking about what i was talking about with the art like what am i supposed to feel with each page and how much do i feel it do i really 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 feel it or is it just kind of like oh i see where what this person was trying to do but it didn't fully get there a lot of people nowadays have wonderful technically wonderful portfolios but um, the ideas themselves are not original are you just drawing characters together you know just mashing up duck alligator boom go you know or uh, are you kind of mashing things together or putting things together designing them in a certain way to evoke a certain emotion. For example, for example, when I think about uh, Butter Bunny, I smile, you know, because it's something cute and fluttery, and uh, that's the emotion that I want, an emotion of, ah, that's really weird and cute. You know, so I would look at it and go, is it the right amount of cute? Is it the right amount of weird? Maybe it's not weird enough. If it's not weird enough, then maybe I might put some antennas there. Perhaps I might put some things that are a bit stranger looking, um, a little bit more textural, like like insect kind of textural textures. But of course, that will take away from the cuteness. So I want to be careful of that or it could take away from the cuteness. I almost don't even want to give this away. <laughs> I don't know how it's looking on screen, but um, I like this one. Okay, so is a Nico, a Nico sequel in the works, says Mike. Kind of, you know, we're we, the Nico thing was bought by, uh, it was optioned by Amazon Studios. So we've been, you know, working on a pitch for them for Nico, handed it in a couple weeks ago. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully there'll be a whole series, you know. It was really fun to put together that package and I think it looks great. So we'll see what they say. Okay. Um, let's see. How do you get out of your comfort zone artistically? Says Paul. Comfort zone. Well, it that's kind of like just a conscious thing. You just got to kind of get used to frustration. <laughs> you know, especially when you start getting comfortable, the frustration leaves. And if you want to learn anything else, then all of a sudden the frustration comes back and you're like, I don't like this feeling anymore because you're just so used to being good at whatever you're doing now. Let's see what else we got here. I'd like to know how, 
how you can maintain several styles but still have a trademark. I like a wide variety of art, so I don't want to stick with one style. But it's hard. It's harder to make every style your own," says Danielle. That's a really great question too, Danielle. Um, when you kind of discover something, when you kind of create something that's that you feel is unique, repeat it. Keep repeating it. It's like putting your stamp on things. Once you put your stamp on it, once once everybody starts going, oh, that looks like a Bobby Chu uh, creature that you just drew, then you can move on, you know what I mean? Or then I could move on. And then you could explore something new. That's what I'd suggest. You know, don't just do one awesome piece of art of this awesome character that everybody loves and then just stop. Explore it, keep going until everybody, yeah, you know, anybody that draws, you know, if I thought that this butter bunny thing would be something, then I would just keep doing butter bunnies and all sorts of different, uh, you know, situations and all sorts of different kind of moments until everybody just goes, oh yeah, butterfly bunny? Oh, that's so... Bobby Chu, <laughs> right? And then move on. What goes through your mind when you're designing your characters? That one's a little bit tough, really. Uh, I guess I can kind of simplify it. Uh, what goes through my mind? Well, definitely how special is it? How memorable is this thing? You know, that's a very, very important thing to me. That's why, you know, a lot of people, they can draw creatures, whatever, but it still might not, it might even look like what some of my creatures, but it won't feel like one of my creatures because it's not the same, there isn't the same idea uh, process behind them. You know, they might do the same kind of style, but people can still tell the difference. Hopefully, anyways. Um, let me look for some more questions here. But we got about 15 minutes. If you haven't shared the post yet and you want a chance for this drawing, then definitely share it right now. And uh, you can go to the URL to share on your Facebook and then I'm going to choose one one of the people I shared to send this drawing out to, okay? RH Who are the artists that influenced your style? Um there's a lot, you know, I definitely took the time to study a lot of different people. I feel that that's very important. Uh for anybody to do. So, well, Chris Sanders, love Chris Sanders stuff, Peter DeSev, Steven Silver, uh, Nathan Fawkes, um, who else was there? There was Claire Wendling, um, See, Claire Wendling also in influenced my my work, I, th I feel. Here's one that nobody really kind of pieces together. Sergio, Sergio Aragones from uh, Mad Magazine. He influenced my stuff a lot because his stuff is so universal. You don't need to know English to understand his art, right? You understand the jokes whether or not you know who Justin Bieber is or not. You know what I mean? Um, I love that fact about him, and that really influenced the kind of humor that I put into my art. I always like to put in things that are very universal. Let's see here. So 
I'm just trying to look at okay Julia says uh, if you do your own projects were you ever afraid that people might reject it in the end if you uh, if you show it out there or does it matter that or sorry or does it only matter that you can grow together with your project so if you show your project are you ever afraid of people might that people might reject it in the end actually no um, I was a lot more afraid of people changing it you know because that has happened in the past where uh, you know I have an idea people like it they purchase the option to develop it further and then they start changing it you know making suggestions changing it and that's fine you know a little bit of it that of that's fine but to the point where I don't recognize my own uh, idea anymore that's when it can get frustrating and I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about so that's actually why we made um, Nico and the Sword of Light we wanted to do a pitch we wanted to create something that will you know, hopefully become a series or or whatever but at the same time we wanted this thing to see the light of day we wanted to make sure that if we're going to put effort into this it's going to come out in one way or another so we decided let's make it into you know a comic book uh, story app and that was the real purpose of the Nico thing in the first place um, yeah not really afraid of people rejecting the idea I'm just more concerned about the story not actually getting out there that's what I'd be afraid of but that's why you know we're living in such a great time right now because you can just get an iBook you know, developer account or whatever and just make your own books or if you're a little bit more um, if you're looking to do more you can always make it into a story app and everything and spend a, spend a bunch of time on it let's see what other questions are there it's funny because they the Facebook thing doesn't really post um, in order. It's strange. Okay, so uh, if one was to focus on being a book cover artist, which aspect of art do you think one should concentrate on most? Composition, technique? Well, definitely composition. I, I, I feel like technique will come in time so you don't necessarily need to look for that too carefully I would be more concerned about dissecting other people's techniques and just filling up your brain with so many different ways of uh, how people do book covers you know, that, that, that'd be how I would do it because in the beginning you need to be a little bit versatile for sure even if you have your own great style already I remember you know I was taking uh, Buck Lewis drawings and flushing them out into full-fledged paintings you know really loose drawings and bring them into into like a you know a lot more kind of photo real lighting shadow structure everything texture 
from very, very loose drawings. Um, if it wasn't for you know, the, the fact that I practiced a lot of different styles to study them and understand them, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And because I did that, then the company that I was you know, working for at the time, or the company that Buck was working for at the time, ended up calling me back you know, later to see if I could work on anything else. Um, yeah, so let's go on to the next uh, question here. Great question. How do you evaluate your ev evolution? How do you guide your style to where, where you want it to go? Style comes from knowledge. So it's more like how do you guide the kinds of knowledge that you want to have? Well, that really just you know takes some conscious thinking about what do you, what interests you. Does fashion interest you? Then learn about fashion. You know, if wildlife interests you, then learn all about wildlife. Right, and then through learning the things that you like, for sure you're going to develop a style that you like and that, that you wanted you wanted it to be developed in that way. Right? I would be more concerned about the types of knowledge that you're going after. Are you going after any kind of, you know, extra knowledge or are you just practicing a lot? If you're practicing a lot, things will go by a lot slower than the person that takes the time to you know, consciously look to learn uh, from what others have already you know, spent so long to, to learn themselves. Most great techniques take years and years to develop and minutes to, or hours to explain. Okay. What's the best way of responding to a client who wants samples of your work or would like you to do a test before accepting you as their artist and it's not clear if they'll pay you? Well, for sure you would want to... Okay, there's different um, philosophies here. I know my buddy Steven, he has a different philosophy than I do, Steven Silver. Um, you know, I live in Toronto, Canada. so. For me to get my name out there into you know California, it takes more effort, right? So it takes a lot more exposure. So instead of just weighing out, well, how much does this job pay and how much do I like it, I more weigh it out in terms of um, money or exposure. If I'm going to get a huge amount of exposure because of this, guaranteed, then I'm willing to take a lot less money. Sometimes even free. I know, I know silver is totally against that, but I'll tell you why. Okay, here's a great example. Red Cross Australia wanted me to, um, they wanted to take one of my paintings and and use it as their poster for this big uh, fundraising you know, event. They were going to make 60 foot posters of this thing outside of some museum. So they said, well, we'll pay you $300, which is not that much, you know. So I said, no, you guys can keep the $300. You know, Red Cross, you guys are doing great things. Uh, I would rather, you know, let you guys keep the $300, but if you don't mind, could you put my name and website, uh, you know, in fine print or whatever, every time that you use this painting? And they said, yeah. You know, so I did it for free. And at this event, that was like a thousand dollars a plate 
you know, who do you think attends these events? People that can afford $1,000 a plate. So that put my work in front of all these people now that um, potentially would need some, you know, high-end art, art services. And that's exactly what happened. Afterwards, got a bunch of emails from different, you know, clients in Australia that ended up wanting to work with us. Where did they see our stuff? Well, either from the event or from friends that went to the event that took home a little souvenir or whatever, pass it on to their friends, so on and so forth. So it, it really is about money or exposure. Now why money? A lot of artists, I remember in school, a lot of artists, they would say, it's not about the money, it's not about the money. Well, that's because they don't have bills to pay. It's not about the money, but it's, uh, it's about designing your life in a way where you can draw and paint what you want, you know, most of the time so that you aren't struggling so that you don't have to take a second job or whatever so that you don't have to take too many jobs so that you can paint at your potential because that will attract even better jobs and so on and so forth it's kind of like a chess game you gotta make the right moves so yeah money is extremely important because it gives you the freedom to choose a lot more you don't have to take all the jobs that are passed your way. Instead, you can be more selective. And when you become more selective, you're filling up your portfolio with more and more things that, you know, are things that you want to do, which will only bring you towards more and more things, more and more jobs that you want to do. question here sorry just give me a second you know what I'll just uh, refresh about three more minutes left and then we're gonna choose a winner for this uh, little butterfly, this b butter bunny drawing. I think it's maybe flying over the fields. Okay, so if you would like a chance to win, well, you know what, all I want from you is just to share this post to hopefully encourage others later on. Um, to draw with us, to hang out with us, and just, you know, learn about art, talk about being an artist, and all that good stuff, you know, because the more we're all educated on how this stuff works, the more power we will have, the more say we'll have. You know, that's how we all benefit from getting together consistently running out of ink but yeah that's how we'll all get better and have more say in things and you know have better jobs in, in general it's to be educated to educate ourselves okay so um, see if there's any more questions before pick a winner Overall, I think uh, there's been some really great questions here. Okay, Tammy had another question. You've mentioned that people have every excuse to not like what they're not good at. In your opinion, when would you draw the line and allow yourself to try your hand in something else? 
Also, if you have time, please share about how the art you produced is all part of a process. Okay, so in your opinion, when would you draw the line and allow yourself to try your hand in something else? Well, the most successful people, they kind of embrace the, the struggle and the frustration of learning. Right, so draw the line. I, I wouldn't even have a line, Tammy. You know, learn the things that you're passionate about, that you wish that you knew. You got to just go for it and know that it's possible, not if you just put in the time, but because you put in the effort and the time and to use common sense. Okay, so you're constantly kind of looking up and looking at your stuff from a kind of higher level point of view and seeing, am I going in the right direction? Oh, by the way, this card is also, just like last week, it has a little sketch on the back. So whoever wins this card, you're actually winning two cards. You're getting a Butter Bunny and uh, just random drawing that I was doing uh, previous. So a little extra surprise should be kind of cool. Oops. OK. Um, then there's, last thing, okay, how's the art you produced? Okay, Tammy's saying, please share about how the art you produce is all part of a process. And what that means is that um, I don't look at art, my art, and go, it has to look good in the end. I have to make a great piece of art. I don't think about things like that. Um, I'm a lot more interested in the process. I'm a lot more interested in how much did I try, how much did I concentrate on creating this butter bunny? Well, you know what? I tried as much as I could uh, while talking. So of course, it's not going to be the absolute best. But uh, I feel good for the effort that I put into doing the stream while drawing it. And that's what really matters. You know, did you put in the effort when you painted that great painting? If you didn't, I wouldn't feel that good about it. Did you put in a lot of great effort in those horrible paintings that you ended up doing? Yes. Well, then I would feel great about it because it's all a part of the process, right? That's what art is to me. It's, it's not the result, it's the journey. And if you constantly focus on the journey, then you will make the long journey. You know, if you're just concentrating on the end product, then you're, you know, you're in it for the short run, not the long run. Of course, if you think about both, then that's great because then you're thinking about things in short term and long term, but long term is more important than short term okay we're all gonna live uh well you know hopefully we'll all live a very long time afterwards right so do you want a great 10-year career if you're you know 40 years old or do you want like a great 30-year career from when you're 40. Right? You still have to keep living. You still have to keep doing stuff. So if you're just thinking in the short term and concentrating, designing your life around short-term goals, you might be in for some really big surprises, which will be scary. You know, be in it for the long term. Um, 
I listened to this documentary is about this uh, is about this studio that for 25 years it did well and then it went bankrupt but then the the owner of the studio was saying you know a lot of people say how did you fail what happened how did you fail and he said well he didn't think of it as failing because he's been around for 25 years it's been 25 years of succeeding before it all ended well I plan on painting for more than 25 years from this point. I would hate for a career to just end in 25 years and then all of a sudden I have to start over and find a new career. That's scary. So be in it for the long run. If you see any problems with the way that you are working, think about how you want it to work and constantly design your life towards that. If you're in a situation where the whole structure of how you get paid doesn't make sense to you, then you have to get out of that. You can't just think, well, how long can I ride it out? That doesn't make sense. Okay, anyways, that's my little uh, preach to hopefully, you know, help some people out there that are not um, not thinking about this stuff, you know, because these are things that everybody should be learning in school to start thinking in the long term of their careers, not the short term, not just how to get a job, but how to develop a great career, okay? That's the main goal here. Okay, so I wanted to just give this drawing away now. Okay, I'm going to go through the shares and scroll through. And then randomly, I will select one of you guys to uh, send this drawing out to. Let's see. You just have to keep expanding. It's taking a little bit of time. Okay, so the winner is Purper Nas. I'm just gonna write your name down because I don't want to mess it up even further. But it's Purper. Um, hold on. <laughs> All right. So the winner of today's chew stream is this person, Purper Nastvogel. I'm so sorry, Purper, by the way, for butchering your name. Um, I know I must have gotten it wrong. Please accept my apologies. Um, and also, you know, congratulations, because you are going to get this. Let me just sign this little drawing here of uh, something that I actually really liked when I finished it. Pen's running out of ink. Butter Bunny on one side and then random drawing on the other side okay so thank you so much everybody for tuning in today it's been fun it's been awesome and we're gonna do it again okay next week come back and if you're not working on anything draw with me just hang out and draw with me we're just gonna do this like a routine it's good for the soul good for your artistic soul you know, to just remember why it is that you are an artist in the first place. 
okay it's not because of your job it's not because of your homework that you have to do it's because we just love art we love the smell of crayons and we love seeing colors just coming together and you know that's what it's about okay so till next week same true time same true channel true stream 10 o'clock <laughs> eastern time or 7 a.m uh pacific time all right take care everybody have an awesome day sending positive vibes out to each and every one of you take care and goodbye